Hello, and welcome to this International Society of Automation webinar. Now allow me to get this webinar started and introduce today's speaker, Wally Magda, ISA Instructor. Wally? Thank you, Kim. Greetings to everybody. So our presentation here is about ISA 62443 and the standards that ISA has been developing and what we have available in the courses uh, to present some of the certificates. So let me get going. We always have a disclaimer, think before you act. You'll find these in all of the standards at the beginning. The standard instructor, you know, we can't anticipate all your applications or anything that you're doing, safety operational issues in a hazardous condition. So use of any of this course information, instructor references, any technical reports, and especially third-party tools may adversely affect hazardous materials. You need to be careful with this stuff. And you have to exercise professional judgment under your particular circumstances. So it's solely up to you. You've got to consider government regulatory limitations, legal restrictions and ramifications, international laws, code of ethics, health, safety, environment. Most of us that are in the industrial automation and control system business, we're used to these things. So be careful about possessing some of these tools. Check with your country's laws, your local regulatory laws. Some of these tools that we use in scanning uh, may be okay in one country, may not be in another. No animals were harmed in the making of this presentation. We made sure of that. There's my office assistant. And as you saw in my bio, I do have a background in control systems. I think the most important thing here is that I've got 25 years experience. I started off as a instrumentation and control tech, worked my way up being a process control engineer, and had the fortunate experience of working in corporate and enterprise security uh, with a force service utility. So I bring that to the table with all that experience beside my certifications. So how do we keep the lights on and fuel flowing when everyone has access to the switch nowadays? I mean, this is global. This isn't just the United States. Europe pipelines, uh, the United States, you hear a lot about the electric grid and the fragility, and we're using pipelines here to fuel the different formerly coal-fired plants. How do we keep this critical infrastructure protected? What if you're a small mom and pop, a book binding, you make widgets, uh, you're taking care of conveyor belts that are all automated. That's important to your business, and that needs to be protected as well. You may not have the resources. So these standards are to help you come up with a plan. You want to protect your ability to perform the mission. Uh, there's, we worry about reliability, resiliency, and recovery. That's pretty common for us. Uh, conse consequence reduction versus focusing on the controls in place. When we create our loops and our diagrams and our PNIDs and set everything up, we look at what, what happens if this fails, what's going to be the fail mode. You want to protect your job. A company can go out of business. And it's any type of a cyber attack that could knock you out for how many days, how long can you last? And then what's the potential consequences? Financial, of course, health safety, environmental. Now in this little cartoon here, I don't know if you want to take a look at this and say that uh, sure glad the hole isn't at our end. And is that the operations technology folks sitting there high and dry with while the poor information technology folks are just bailing away trying to keep the ship up? Or is it the other way around? What do you think? The 62443 standards are used to secure your control systems are set up in different phases. We have the assess phase, the develop and implement phase, and the maintain phase. We want to connect these dots. Uh, how are we doing this with our industrial automation and control systems? So how are you going to do that? How are you going to secure your control systems? There are a lot of frameworks out there. There's NIST. Different countries have their own particular frameworks. We're we'll, we'll going to be focusing on 62443. But what is a control system? What is control system cybersecurity? Lots of definitions out there. I've taken this from the SCADA Master Glossary from the ISA 99 SharePoint. 
The control system is defined as a collection of personnel, hardware, software, and policies involved in the operation of the industrial process that can affect or influence its safe, secure, and reliable operation. Also known as industrial automation and control systems. So the key thing here is it can affect or influence its safe, secure, and reliable operation. Anything can affect that from physical to cyber to just somebody flipping the wrong switch that wasn't protected as maybe it needed to be. What's cybersecurity? It's defined as measures taken to protect a computer or computer system. We're looking at it from a systems approach against unauthorized access or attack. Now the term IACS is sometimes referred to as just ICS, Industrial Control Systems, in different frameworks or in information technology folks also may refer to it as SCADA, uh, S-C-A-D-A. -A. Uh, but with 62443s, the terminology has evolved to being Industrial Automation and Control System, pretty much all covering everything that we do in the control world. So what are the trends that are happening now? Businesses are reporting more unauthorized attempts and marked increase in malicious code attacks. You hear that every day. Control systems are using commercial off-the-shelf software. We want to do things cheaper, faster, easier, less people, and we're also using hardware like that. You know, is your plant's teapot or your kettle or coffee maker on the internet? It may be. There's actually a RFC. Have you ever checked any of these? If you're not familiar with them, you want, might want to look it up after this webinar when you get a chance. But are you compliant with HTCPCP-TEA, the T protocol? There's also increased use of remote monitoring and access. The vendors need to get in. If you're running turbines or gear, they want to watch the state of the health. You may need to log in remotely to take care of problems. Maybe you're taking care of three or four different facilities. I at one time had to carry like five pagers for five different areas that I was responsible for. Made me feel really important. But that was all remote monitoring and access that had to be into effect. And there's a lot of tools out there that are designed to attack SCADA systems or control systems. There's Metasploit SCADA modules now. Rise of the dark net poses new risks to the SCADA and IACS systems. What are the potential impacts of all of this? You could have unauthorized access to theft or misuse of data. And that loss of integrity and reliability is really important. System availability loss. What if my screens go dark and 